So this morning, uh, we're up to our third of four lessons taken from our Life Recovery Bibles. In the front, where you see the 12 laws of life recovery. So it says up there four, five, and six, but that's wrong. We're at seven, eight, and nine. So the rewards are victory, reward, and freedom, but they require surrender, service, and forgiveness. Surrender, service, and forgiveness. That's what we have to do to reap the rewards of victory, right? reward, and freedom. Are you ready? Before we get any further, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you that it is the truth, Lord, for each and every one of us. Help us, Father, to not only understand your word this morning, but help us, Lord, to own it. Help us not only to trust, but to obey. Because we can trust your word is truth, but unless we apply it to our lives, it's no good. So help us, Father, this morning. It takes courage to make major changes in our lives, so give us the strength and the courage it will require for us not only to hear your word, not only to believe it as truth, but to do it, to do it. It's not going to be easy because we've been the person that we've been for so long. We've done the things that we've done for so long, Lord. And as you shed light on them, we can see them for what they are, Lord. We can see sin for what it is. Before we act out on it, Lord, give us the strength we need. That even in the face of others, we make the right choices. Even in the face of ridicule, or even in the face of rejection, that we stand firm in your word, and we become and maintain our relationship with you. We become the man that you created us to be. And we live as the men that you've created us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, number seven of 12 laws as found in your life recovery Bibles. Number seven is surrender will result in victory. When we truly surrender ourselves, we are saying to God, your will, not mine. A, true, a truly surrendered life is a life lived out as a celebration of our victory. All right, I truly believe. Now listen, there's an initial surrender of self. When we accept God's will for our lives, when we've surrendered ourselves and accept that which he's given, which is his son, Christ Jesus, into our hearts as our personal savior, we are then giving up of ourselves. As Christ died on the cross, we too die of old self. And that is a requirement. Now, it also then requires a daily surrender. We need to daily surrender when temptation comes. We need to daily surrender when somebody gets in our face. We need to daily surrender when she's calling and saying, oh, come home, baby. Right, you know what I'm talking about, right? God gives us what we need each day. However, a lot of times we try to take back that will. We try to take back that strength on our own, saying we can handle this ourselves. So daily surrender is required. When we truly surrender ourselves, we are saying to God, your will, not mine, right? God's will, not mine, be done. 
Third step prayer. Man, I'm telling you, in the world we live in, you should be saying that throughout your day all day long because you know stuff gets in your face every day. All day long. God's will not mine be done. God knows better than me. The God of all creation who created us has a better plan for our lives than we can have for ourselves. But the wisdom from above, right? The wisdom of God. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. So it's not self. Not self. Now, we have to look at ourselves first, right? We have to make that initial surrender. We have to make sure that we are right, that we are trying our best, each of us individually, to live right in God's eyes. But once we've come in to a relationship with God, we are then part of the church. You know what the church is? The Not a building, right? The it's people. It's us. It's a body of believers. Right, right, like like-minded, moving in the same direction, all called by God into a relationship with Him. We are the church. It's not a building. So it includes more than just self. Now, of course, again, self, we have to look at our relationship with God and make sure that we are doing our best to live as he would have us to live, but that includes others. The wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is perfect. It is peace-loving. When we sit there and we start to think of, you know, how we've been treated and what we're going to do about it, that's not peace-loving, right? When those thoughts start to bounce around how we're going to get back, right? It is gentle at all times. It's not saying, what are you, a stupid idiot? Why would you do that? Right? We might think that way sometimes in our heads, but we shouldn't be treating people that way, right? And willing to yield, listen, willing to yield to others. So that self-centered, self-serving person that we've been, needs to go. It needs to go. And, and and listen, just it's not just like, you know, you being able to go over and flip a, sh a switch on your own and to be all of a sudden peace loving. It comes through the initial surrender of self and acceptance of Christ. When your heart changes, Okay? It's, it's one of those things, again, like it's hard to explain to somebody. It's something that you have to see in someone else and say, wow. And, and, I, and I pray each morning to, you know, that God help me. Because I know sometimes I say things that I don't really mean and they come out the wrong way. But I ask God every day to help me. be gentle at all times, to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism. And that is really important for me. I think it's important for you as well. No favoritism. When I stand up here and I tell you that I am no different than, it's only, I'm only one bad decision away from being in the pew, right? to being back in a dorm, right? We're all level. 
Now, I might have something to give because I'm further along, but I don't see myself as any better than anyone else, and I don't see anybody any less. I don't see myself as any less than someone else either. So that's important. Sincere. You gotta be right first. But you being right with God means that you are a part of the church. Our relationship with God includes each other. So again, surrender of self. Surrender of self-centeredness and you being the center of, of, of the universe. That needs to go for victory. Service. So that's like a continuation then, right? So that if I'm yielding to others, if I'm caring for others, if I'm living as God would have me to live, service. Serving one another. Our acts of service are not to be done in order to gain a reward. As we are faithful in our service, the reward is the peace and satisfaction that comes as a result of our obedience. So in other words, me helping a little old lady across the street is not going to, you know, I might feel good about myself. It's not going to get me into heaven. I should not force myself then to get out of my car and go over and, oh, I don't want to do this. Me getting out of a car to help someone across the street is because of the love that God has for me, right? Displayed in my life, my living out loud that which God is doing for me. That's the service. It should come as a natural um, expression of God's love. Through our transformation of old self, I'm the center of the universe, now we care about one another. Now, sometimes it's not going to be easy to get up from the TV and walk over because somebody else is crying in the corner and you know they need some help, especially if the game's on. But <clears throat> listen, it is part of it is part of our relationship with God, looking after and caring for each other, the church. Doing that which we know God would have us to do. I pray all the time in my prayer here in chapel and, and, and that we have to be that outward expression of the change from within. service. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4, 11. I'll read 11 through 12 first. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors, and the teachers. Mm -hmm. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church. Right? Which is the body of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. You, each and every one of you, after we've come into a relationship with God, are part of the body of Christ. We are the church. Us working together. So verse 13 says, This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son, that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. As I mentioned, right, I look at us all really on the same level before God's eyes. However, because I have a little bit more time, I've spent a little bit more time in God's Word, i spent a little bit more time in prayer, I've spent a little bit more time caring for others, I have something to give. And you can't keep it unless you what? Give it away. You give it away. Each and every one of us should be in the same mindset. That the guy that came in yesterday has something to give the guy that walks through the door today. You've already slept in a bed. You've already eaten the food. You can say, dude, it'll be all right. Bed's a little hard. Food is pretty good. But you'll be all right. 
So we all have something to give. Sometimes we look at scripture like this, and there is a list. It says the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. And we figure, I'm none of those. You have no idea. I wouldn't have, 26 years ago, I wouldn't have expected my, who I was, to be part of this list. You have no idea. Again, that comes from the daily surrender of self. We have to continue each day to seek and to grow, to surrender to win, but to seek and to learn and to grow, to read God's word, to pray. You know, Lord, help me understand what you want from your word. You know, give me, give me, you know, in here, Lord, help me to know in my soul, in my heart, what it means for me. Because we continue to learn. This will continue until we come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son. It's a process. And we all grow. We all move. We become stronger and able to, you know, in our ability to do that which God wants for us to do. But first, we have to figure out what it is that God would have us to do. So, first and foremost, it is our relationship with God through Christ Jesus. That is the most important thing. That we recognize that God is calling us into a relationship with Him. That He's made it possible for us to come into this relationship with Him. And that requires forgiveness. And you know, when we accept Christ in our hearts, we say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. But it says in God's word that if we do that, if we come before him at the altar and we are seeking forgiveness, but yet we still hold something against our brother. And when it says, like when, when in the Bible, right, where it says man, most of the time it means mankind. When it says brother, it means, you know, like, we know that, right? So if I'm holding something against somebody else, if I messed up because somebody did something to me, I got to get right. Forgiveness. Because when we ask for forgiveness, we are freed from our sins, but we also need to forgive be freed from our resentments, our anger. And I'm not telling you let somebody walk on you and let go. You know, it's really about what you do with it. Just because you forgive somebody doesn't make mean that you're, you know, that you're okay with what they did to you. It's to free you, not them. It's to free you. When we hold a grudge, we are in bondage to the person we refuse to forgive. Freedom is the result of being obedient to God and forgiving others. It's not easy, man. I tell you, I had a grudge so bad that it held me back for a long time. It ruined a lot of who I was. It, it held me back from being the man that God really had intended for me. And until I was able to let go of that, I couldn't move forward. And, and it was kind of not, a, it was kind of a strange thing because it, it, it included one of those, you ever seen those styrofoam bats that get beat on things as you scream? That really, I had to do that to let it out. You know, I asked God continually for help with that. And that was the mechanism God gave me to let that go. But whatever it takes, we have to let these things go because it doesn't, you know, holding on to them doesn't help us in any way. It doesn't matter about the person that harmed us. But in order, in order for us to move forward, we have to get to a point where we're able to just let go and move forward. Colossians 2. 
you were dead because of your sins. Because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive in Christ. For he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Uh, I'd imagine that most of us here have experienced legal issues, right? We, we know what it's like to be not only accused, but I guess there's, well, all of us, I'm sure, have been accused, but maybe not all of us have actually been convicted of a crime. So we understand this language, right? We, we know what this means. That we know, and sometimes we didn't do it, but we know that we have done wrong and we have to pay the price. We're going to have to pay the price. I say all the time, we have to be accountable for our past. Just because we've made a decision to change our lives don't mean all that stuff that we did in the past is going to go away. I know physically. But my body's still paying for all that damage. But all of the things that we've done, the people that we've hurt, the laws that we've broken, right? The things that we've done, we still have to go through that. We have to be accountable in order to move forward. I say all the time, and, and, and trust me, I'm not saying any of you guys here, but I know over the years there's been many people that come into these centers just to hide from the law. Some of you may be hiding from the drug dealer too, but <laughs> we come into these places, right, for many different reasons, but all of us have a past. We have all harmed ourselves. We've been harmed, but we've all harmed ourselves and others. <laughs> by doing the wrong thing. Well, just because God, you know, has, has saved us and cleansed us of our sins, we still might have legal issues that we have to deal with. We might have people that we've hurt. Um, and we have to be responsible for that. So first, let's look at that. We have to be accountable for our past. But when it comes to sin, and it comes to our relationship with God, you are dead because of your sins. And because of your sinful nature had not yet been cut away. But then, God made you alive in Christ. For he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took them away by nailing to the cross. I, you know, I always hear, God's, God takes your, your, your past, your sins, and throws them into a sea of forgetfulness. Well, maybe for him, but we still remember, right? God forgives us. Freedom is ours whom have been forgiven and forgive. We have to be able to let go, to forgive others. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Gotta let go. You gotta let go. And even though you know, we're not God and <laughs> we can't forget these things, at least we know in our hearts that we can move past that. We know that He has forgiven. And we too then must forgive others. So back to this slide, which is wrong up top, it says four, five, and six. I'll fix that. But the rewards, victory, is obtainable uh, for those that have relapsed over and over again and think you're not going to be ever able to get it. You can. When people come to me and ask me how I, I, I finally got it, 
the first thing that comes out of my mouth is surrender. Surrender self. Let go. I've been in center so many times I heard everything I needed to hear. I just had yet to do it. I, I had yet to apply it to my life, my life. And it required me to let go of my own will. The only reason why I didn't apply it to my life was because I still wanted to do some stuff that I knew was wrong in God's eyes. I had to let go of those things. The reward. Again, going around and helping people looking for a reward isn't what this means. It means that after a change of nature and who you are, Going after the dollar is not going to be what it used to be. You don't need to. When you become a person of service, part of the church, caring for each other, the fulfillment in that is the reward. The blessing that we receive, blessings on blessings. And again, it's not get going out of your way. Saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get something for doing, for helping this person. Right? We know, right? Because of all of our decision making in the past was kind of one sided, like what can I get out of this deal? It's not about that. You don't do it for the reward. The reward comes because that's who you are now. And freedom, we all want to be free. But there is no freedom without forgiveness. You have to let go. Amen. Amen. So are you ready? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for these truths, these laws of life recovery. Every one of them is, is perfect. We just have to do it. Help us, Lord. Help us. First and foremost, we have to be surrendered. We have to let go. We have to recognize that the things that we do that we know are wrong in your eyes, Lord, keep us away, hinder our growth. Help us, Father, to, to first and foremost come into a relationship with you through Christ Jesus. You've given Christ to us, your Son. So that each and every one of us, the whosoever, right, can make a decision, Lord, help us to believe in our hearts that Christ is the Savior, to accept Him into our hearts, to repent of our sins, never wanting to go back. We come to you now, Lord, help us. We hear your word. We know the truth. You are calling us, Lord, help us to be obedient. That's the hard part. Help us, Father, to surrender to self. Lord, you call us. We are the body of believers. After we come into this relationship with you, Lord, you fill us with your Holy Spirit. But you also have given us each other so that we might help each other, that we might hold each other responsible so that we might recognize change, Lord, and we might help them each other. We might encourage each other. We might lift each other up. Give us the courage, Lord, it will take for us to open our mouths, to get out of our chairs or out of our comfort zone and do that which you're calling us to do. Thank you, Lord, so much for this, for this change that's come upon my life. But I pray, Father, for each and every person here that they too might know this freedom. That we not only have come into a relationship with you and have been forgiven of our sins, but that change in who we are now, concern for each other, Lord. that we're able to then also forgive others. 
whether it's something from our past or something we deal with each day. Holding grudges, harboring anger and resentment. Lord. Again, Father, I thank you for bringing us here this day, this moment. I thank you, Father, for the breath that you put in our lungs. Thank you, Father, for the message that you've given us. Now give us the strength and courage to do, to be the men that you've created us to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.